hello everyone in this video we are going to see about anatomy of left atrium heart consists of four chambers right atrium right ventricle left atrium and left ventricle this is the anterior view of the heart and this is the posterior view of the heart in the previous videos we have seen the anatomy of right atrium right ventricle and left ventricle along with the internal features now coming to the left atrium left atrium is seen from the posterior view of the heart this is the left atrium it is quadrilateral in the shape it forms the anterior boundary of the oblique sinus of the pericardium it receives four pulmonary veins two from the left side and two from the right side left superior pulmonary vein left inferior pulmonary vein likewise right superior and right inferior pulmonary veins this left atrium shows the ear like appendage which extends anteriorly it is notch from outside it overlaps the root of the pulmonary trunk and infundibulum of the right ventricle this ear like appendage is called as the left auricle or also called as the left atrial appendage left atrium contributes in the different features of the heart left atrium forms the two third of the base of the heart it forms the major part of the superior border of the heart left auricle contributes in the formation of the anterior or the sternocostal surface left surface left border of the heart to see the interior of the left atrium we will cut the posterior wall of left atrium thickness of the wall of the left atrium is more than the thickness of the wall of right atrium and it measures about 3 mm interior of this left atrium along with this posterior wall appears smooth the posterior smooth wall of the left atrium is a developmentally derived from absorption of the pulmonary veins while anterior rough part is seen only in the left auricle and it is made rough because of the presence of musculopectinity and developmentally this part is derived from left part of the primitive atrial chamber of the heart tube the musculopectinity in the left auricle make sponge like structure this sponge like structure prevents the free flow of the blood or sluggishes the blood flow and favors the thrombosis this thrombi when dislodge leads to the emboli these emboli can pass from the left atrium into the left ventricle and from the left ventricle they pass through the aorta and its branches and they may block arteries like cerebral artery leading to the cerebral embolism or renal artery leading to the renal embolism in such cases the oral anticoagulants are used or in some Uh, cases where the oral anticoagulants are contraindicated some operative measures are done where this left auricle is occluded such operations or surgeries are referred as left atrial appendicular occlusion in such operative procedures implant is used one of the implant is watchman so these implants are kept in the left auricle and the left auricle is completely blocked preventing the further formation of the thrombi like left auricle right auricle shows the sponge like structure of the musculopectinity within it but here the thrombi when get dislodged pass from the right atrium into the right ventricle and from the right ventricle through the pulmonary trunk they enter into the lungs causing the pulmonary embolism that is the difference between the thrombosis form in the right auricle and the left auricle in addition to that the anterior part of the interior of the left atrium shows the orifice here and this orifice is nothing but the left atrioventricular orifice which communicates 
the left atrium with left ventricle here this left atrioventricular orifice is guarded by anterior cusp and the posterior cusp as there are two cusp it is called as the bicuspid orifice by means two with two cusp so bicuspid orifice or other name of it is the mitral orifice circumference of this left atrioventricular orifice is almost 7 to 9 centimeters in addition to that interior of the left atrium shows the septal wall which is formed by the interatrial septum which divides the left atrium from the right atrium this septal wall shows the presence of semilunar fold which is concave upwards this semilunar fold is derived from upper free margin of septum primum during development this semilunar fold bounds the fossa in the upper part shape of this fossa resembles the moon so it is called as fossa lunata floor of this fossa lunata is derived from septum secundum this septal wall also shows minute openings small openings called as foramina venarum minimarum through which the small veins of the heart called venicordis minimi they open in the left atrium to have the clear idea about the development of fossa lunata and the fossa ovalis i have prepared one model you know the atria are formed from the primitive atrial chamber of the heart tube where there is a development of the interatrial septum so imagine this as the interatrial septum which divides the primitive atrial chamber into the right atrium and the left atrium this interatrial septum is derived from the three septa septum intermedium here I have shown with the green paper. Septum intermedium is a form by the fusion of the ventral and the dorsal atrioventricular cushions. And septum primum and septum secundum, they develop from the roof of the primitive atrial chamber. Septum secundum, it overlaps the septum primum on the right side. So the lower border of the septum secundum will be seen from the right atrium while the upper free margin of the septum primum will be seen from the left side. So here this pink color paper is the septum primum and the faint blue color is this septum secundum. Now if you compare here this is the fossa ovalis the floor of fossa ovalis is formed by the septum primum while the sickle shaped fold which bounds the fossa ovalis is called limbus fossa ovalis or annulus ovalis ovalis which is nothing but the lower free margin of septum secundum well if you see the interatrial septum from the left side the features are like this the semilunar fold indicates the upper free margin of this septum primum and the floor of the fossa lunata is formed by the septum secundum in between the septum primum and septum secundum there is a volvular gap which is directed upwards and to the left side which is called foramen oval and it is a patent in 25% of the cases which is called as the propatency of foramen oval. So that is about the interior of left atrium. Similar features of the left atrium we will see in the specimen of the heart. Thank you. Specimen of the heart. Heart consists of four chambers, right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium and left ventricle. In this video, we are going to discuss about the left atrium. Left atrium cannot be seen from the anterior view. To see the left atrium, we have to turn the specimen of the heart. On the posterior aspect, we can see this is the left atrium which receives four pulmonary veins. Left superior, left inferior pulmonary vein. Likewise, right superior, right inferior pulmonary vein. This left atrium is almost quadrilateral in the shape. It contributes in the formation of two-third of the base of the heart, two-third of the upper border of the heart and it shows the ear-like appendage called as the left auricle which extends anteriorly and it 
overlaps the root of this pulmonary trunk and it contributes in the formation of left border left surface of the heart and small part of the anterior surface of the heart to see the interior of the left atrium we will cut open the left atrium the posterior wall of the left atrium is cut to see the interior so interior is divided into the posterior part which is smooth it receives four pulmonary veins and it is developmentally derived from the absorption of the pulmonary veins while the anterior part which is formed by this left auricle is derived from the left half of the primitive atrial chamber of the heart tube and within this left auricle there are muscular elevations called musculopectinity which make the interior of the left auricle sponge like this sluggishes the blood flow and it favors the formation of the thrombosis in atrial fibrillation when these thrombi get dislodged they produce cerebral embolism or renal embolism that is the difference between the embolism in the left auricle and the right auricle right auricle embolism produces the pulmonary embolism while the left auricular embolism they block the cerebral and the renal arteries in addition to that you can see the septal wall this is the interatrial septum present between the left atrium and the right atrium this septal wall shows the semi lunar fold with concavity directed upwards and it bounds the fossa above the fossa above here is called as the fossa lunata the floor of the fossa lunata is derived from septum secundum while the concave margin semi lunar fold is derived from upper margin of the septum primum coming to the other feature anteriorly this left atrium shows the opening here this opening is nothing but the left atrioventricular opening through it the left atrial blood enters into the left ventricle and this left atrioventricular orifice is guarded by two cusps anterior cusp and the posterior cusp so it is also called bicuspid wall or it is also called as the mitral wall if you see the thickness of the left atrium it is thicker than the wall of the right atrium so that is about the interior of the left atrium